Hello readers. Today I'm bringing you the introduction to the story from outside because today's story is set in a park. It's set in a beautiful park in the centre of a city called Sydney, surrounded by very tall buildings. But you might have a park where you live. I'm in a park right now. I wonder what do you do in your park? Now I can't hear what your answers might be, but I'm thinking you might say things like playing, picnicking, walking a dog, exercising, hanging out with family. You might even say things like having a sleep or playing soccer. There's lots of things we can do in our park and the main character from today's story does something very different in the park. I hope you like it. The story is called Millicent and it is by a very famous Australian author and illustrator called Jeannie Baker. Jeannie Baker writes the story and then she creates her own images to go with it. And there's something a little bit different about her images because they're not drawn or painted, but they're made by collage, which is using natural materials to create the pictures. So if there was going to be leaves in the pictures, she would actually use leaves to make that part of the picture. If someone was wearing a straw hat, then she would use a piece of a straw hat to make the picture. So although the story is a quite a small story, the pictures are so beautiful, I think that you will really like it. So today we're reading Millicent by Jeannie Baker. Millicent. Millicent is a story by Jeannie Baker. And it's published by Scholastic. The thing that is so interesting about this story is that all of the pictures are made through collage. Collage is when the artist takes real objects and uses them to build a picture. You can see that those leaves are actually taken from real leaves. The wool on the jumper is made from real wool, real knitted items. I hope you have a close look at the pictures during this book. We notice here that this sign is giving us the setting. This is in Hyde Park. We know that it is in Hyde Park, Sydney because we know that Hyde Park, Sydney is called Hyde Park Square. We can recognise some of the buildings and also we know that Jeannie Baker is an Australian artist and it features a typically Australian story. For those of you who are around the world, you might know Hyde Parks in other places. Hyde Park is a park in the centre of Sydney, Australia. It is similar to many parks in other parks of the world. I often sit in Hyde Park and watch the interesting people there. One of these is a man who carries his few possessions with him in a suitcase on wheels. Another man with a smiling face always carries a beautiful Chinese fan. He is covered with sparkling jewels. Whenever he sees me, he bows and waves his fan and then turns around three times. Every day at the same time, an old lady walks through Hyde Park. She never stops to speak to anyone but the park pigeons expect her. When they see her coming, they fly towards her and make a sweeping circle above the place where she always stops. They land all around and on her in a noisy, fluttering heap. She feeds the pigeons and then talks to them, calling each by the name she has given it. I have often watched the pigeon lady and wondered what she might be thinking. Now here the author is introducing us to the main character and she's also giving us a hint that this book will be about what that main character is thinking. Another feather for my collection. We know that another feather for my collection is what this lady is thinking. Because although there is a speech bubble, it doesn't have an arrow. It has two dots. Those two dots show us that the character is thinking rather than speaking aloud. I'll soon have enough feathers to make myself a coat. Now, if you've been to Hyde Park in Sydney, you might actually recognise some of the parts in the pictures here. 
at lunchtime, during the day and during the weekend as well, you, there are often people gathering. Some are there to have their lunch break, some are there for picnics, some are there to take pictures and enjoy the spot with their family. You can see in the front picture, there's a lady sitting on the seat reapplying her makeup. She looks like she might have stopped off during her lunch break. Perhaps I'll make a feather hat to match. You can see in the bottom left corner here is a man with his briefcase, which is a bag that people sometimes take to work. He might be opening it to get his lunch out. There are some people sitting down, looking like they're having a rest from riding a bike. Some other children are over here with a parent or carer going for a walk. There's a character here that's playing with its dogs. And there is a person there, seated on the chair, having a rest. This is our main character. She is looking for feathers that have fallen into the plants. And a feather bag, she thinks. In the center of Hyde Park in Sydney, there is an amazing fountain. And this is a representation of that fountain. It has sculptures all around the sides. People often sit there and often take photos there. So let's have a look at what kinds of people we can see. Oh, there's a boy on top of the fountain in his swimmers. There's another child in the fountain. There's some parents sitting beside there watching their children. There's a family here talking. This man looks like he is playing some kind of instrument. Maybe a recorder. There's our main character and her bag full of belongings. There's a man in a beautiful suit. Another man pushing his luggage around. A lady in a beautiful dress having her photo taken. And a man who is smoking a cigarette and also he has the paper tucked into his pants. This story was set quite some time ago, so you might notice that a lot of people are wearing old-fashioned type of clothing or hats. And feather shoes, she thinks. My goodness, she's going to have a whole outfit made out of feathers. We'll just have a little look around and see what some of the people are doing in the park today. There's a man drinking out of the bubbler. There's a boy playing soccer in the background. A lot of children actually. Someone having a sleep. Boy, it's nice to have a sleep in the park. What do you do when you go to a park? I'll be so warm and cozy. Remember, she's thinking it to herself because in this whole story, she hasn't spoken to anybody else in the park. There's a man with his shoes off having a nap in the sun. There's a lady having a nap in the sun with another friend. Lots of people enjoying the park. There's someone else playing a guitar to their friend. This lady's forgotten her hat, so she's covering her head with her bag. This page doesn't even need any dialogue or description because we can see the action is taking place in the pictures. All the pigeons have noticed her and have arrived. Looks like hundreds of pigeons. What kind of birds are in the parks near your house? This is the first time the character speaks because can you see that the speech bubble has changed to an arrow pointing towards her rather than bubbles? Hello my treasures. I saved you some bread and cabbage from my last night's dinner. That is the first time the character has spoken and it's to the pigeons, not the people. What does this tell us about the character? She also calls them her treasures. What does this show us about how she feels about the birds? She might have used words like my darlings, my dears, my lovelies. She's still speaking to all those pigeons. Now don't fuss, there's enough for everybody. So 
In those bags, she must have brought a lot of bread and cabbage to have enough for all of those pigeons. The fact that her last night's dinner was bread and cabbage shows me that maybe this lady does not have a lot of money if that's what she was only eating for her dinner. And she's very generous then to share it with the pigeons. So we are learning about the character through her actions. We've learnt that she's more interested in talking to the pigeons or more comfortable talking to the pigeons than the people. That she loves the pigeons by the way she spoke to them and the fact that she shared her dinner and that she is a generous and giving person because she is a sharer. I wish you would teach me to fly, Byron. Now this shows us that she's actually giving these pigeons names. You can see in this detail that the artist has used a knitted jacket to actually make the collage and probably use parts of recovered feathers to make the bird because everything is collage. Even her hat is made out of a straw piece of hat. We learned that she wanted to fly by the way that she was talking to Brian the bird. Now she's back to thinking again. These birds understand everything I say to them. I wonder if that makes her feel like she belongs. The birds understand her. They need me so much. Everybody needs to feel like they belong somewhere and have people who need them. So this old lady is getting that from the pigeons. That shows me that maybe she's a little bit lonely. She doesn't have much human friendship, but she does have the pigeons. And there she is having a cup of tea in the park. Here is the outside of the park again, and we see the lady walking away. Oh my goodness, that dog is going to the toilet. What a funny thing to put in the picture. And she thinks, I must hurry. The pigeons in Martin Place are expecting me. Martin Place is another famous little park area, although it doesn't have grass, in Sydney. This shows us that she goes to many different places to feed the pigeons. <laughs>